Ana from uh, GeoModeler, and we are in the webinar of uh, fee flow that we have uh, that we have programmed uh, a few uh, months ago. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there were some problems uh, with uh, Luis Camilo, and so so uh, right now we are not going to have him helping us to. Uh, well, showing us uh, well the, the the power of fee flow as such, and also not uh, evaluating meshes. But we are going to do uh, a really really short uh, demonstration of what GeoModeler can do, and a really short demonstration of the module to export uh, fee flow uh, meshes. But uh, yeah, but uh, on a we're going to 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 re-record uh, the the webinar. Uh, well, we, we are going to, to uh, in the future, uh, in the near future, I hope, we are going to to also uh, show you the the results of the meshes and and how they they look in 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 fee flow. But uh, as I told you right now, what we are going to do is to, to just uh, view a, a short presentation of, of GeoModeler and how uh, the new module works and how uh, you can take advantage of GeoModeler to GeoModel R to uh, be able to uh, create hydrogeological conceptual models that uh, are really good uh, for, your, uh, for your problem at hand and also uh, to uh, to be able to export them to groundwater modeling platforms. Uh, we currently have uh, Modflow as a platform that we can use, but uh, and also and now uh, with the FeeFlow export tool, uh, you can uh, export to FeeFlow. Uh, a warning that, that we must uh, give is that uh, if you export to FeeFlow and you have some problems with the meshes that you exported, uh, the first channel of support is us, is uh, GeoModeler, uh, and then and then we we could uh, well we we will figure out if, if the problem is actually PFLOW or if the problem is our GeoModeler meshes. So uh, so well now that all the warnings have been said and and I'm sorry that uh, I, I know that you wanted to see Luis Camilo. Uh, we are going to, to start with, with, with a short presentation about uh, GeoModeler, okay? Okay, so this is, uh, these are GeoModeler articles. Uh, GeoModeler articles can also be uh, uh, made as presentations. This is running fully, uh, fully, fully from, from the web. So, uh, so this is uh, GeoModeler, the first web geological modeling platform. It allows you to create uh, complex 3D geological settings in no time. So this is one of our oldest examples. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't share uh, my screen. Oops. Oops, I'm going to share my screen right now. Okay. Okay, we were here, GeoModeler, the first web geological modeling platform. Okay, so this is one of our oldest uh, geological models. It's a model of Mount Heath in Canada. It's uh, it actually shows uh, uh, shows all the uh, well balls. Uh, Really, uh, truth faults uh, a lot of uh, complexity in the geological models. Uh, what the modeler does is that it uh, takes a set of cross sections and creates a solid from them. So it's a really, really, really simple way to create 3D geological models. So what's your modeler? It's a full 3D geological modeling platform. That means that uh, that all the modeling is done uh, from from here. It works entirely from the web. So uh, what you have to do is to create your user, and then you can start creating uh, models and, and from, from the platform, OK? So it, it's, it's a basic, uh, with a basic set of operations, you can uh, create your models and uh, visualize them, OK? 
So uh, it can help a geologist to gather and visualize all of his information in a single site from anywhere. It has a modeling methodology that produces always solid, that means simulation ready 3D models. So uh, the geomodeler does is that it it fills entire space, uh, entire, the entire space. So at any point in the space, you will have uh, pay, uh, a, a geological unit and only one geological unit. That means there are no intersections. There are no uh, there are no intersections and there are no holes. Okay. So uh, the, the 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 solid maze complete sense not just uh, it's not just a set of surfaces that somehow are closed or as a, or well or a piecewise linear complex that somehow somehow closes no it's it's a full model it also has interfaces for groundwater modeling it uh, platforms uh, mining software and others including uh, an open source interface for uh, programming your own uh, export tool or your own uh, advantage uh, or your own way to take advantage of the models that, that you can use for for other more complex things okay so the target uh, industries that we have are oil and gas hydrogeology mining and geothermal we have uh, several models that you can see in our platform uh, freely uh, available uh, in, in this uh, in these industries so uh, this actually the model that we are going to work today uh, we're going to share you a link of it so you can so you can view it so you can download the information that it was created with etc okay so how does your modeler work it works uh, it works as a uh, with well as, a, as any platform uh, you first have to, you need your data, you need your information. So uh, geomodeler data sets that can be used, uh, can be structural data, for example, uh, dips and azimuth, uh, azimuth, uh, azimuth and points, exactly. Uh, boreholes, boreholes in format, color survey interval. It's, uh, uh, well, in, in mining format, in deep, in deep, uh, in deep azimuth format, okay. And, also, you can load images. Uh, you can reference them in three dimensions. So, for example, you can load the uh, seismic and georeference it. Uh, you can also load uh, uh, um, geological. Uh, well, you can also load uh, vector information. For example, you can load rivers. You can load uh, a lot of uh, any information that you have in vector format. You can load it to the platform and, and visualize it from there. Okay, and. Right now, we are we also support DXF 3D information, for example, uh, 3D lines and 3D solids, and you can intersect them with uh, with your cross sections, and you can view them in three dimensions too, so that you can improve your model or so that you can uh, visualize, for example, uh, mining infrastructure in GeoModeler. Okay. Uh, also, we have uh, we, we can. So from all the data you have, uh, you can start drawing cross sections. You can start drawing your first cross section, which will actually uh, give two things. Well, first, it will uh, give a, a direction in which interpolation will be made. And also it will give a template of uh, how uh, the rest of cross sections can be uh, started. Okay, so if you interpret well your first cross section, then you have a great starting point to refine your model. Because uh, from the first cross section, you can start creating other cross sections from it. So you you can start one, two, three, four, five, uh, all the cross sections until you finish uh, your model. Uh, you can you can build them from the interpolation algorithm. So you can build one cross section, then build another cross section at the other side of the model. Then uh, the cross section in the middle will be an interpolated cross section that will need minor refinements. So you can create uh, as much cr uh, cross sections as you need in a point that needs a lot of refinement and leave the rest alone. And then uh, and in the end, you will have uh, like every time that you create a cross section, you will have more of your work done. You will have from 90% to, uh, yeah, 90% of your work done and, and you will be able to just uh, adjust a few details. Geomodeler guarantees that all the cross sections will be perfectly and mathematically respected. From this, you can 
I'm sorry. Uh, from this, you can uh, you can uh, you can visualize your model in three dimensions and view it and in in visualize if all the units make sense. If all the units are are if all the units make sense against all the the rest of the informations you have. And when you're happy with your model, when you when you say okay, I'm ready. You can uh, you can uh, do a lot of things. You can present it uh, like this. You can export it. You can share it. You can do a lot of things with your geological model from that. Okay. So uh, the kinds of information, as I told you, are structural data, boreholes, spectral layers, etc. You can support RGs, GeoDivs, Excel files, and uh, 3D and 2D projected information. Okay. Uh, so this is, for example, a shale oil model that uh, has been done by one, by one of our users, Malcolm Lam. This model, well, it might take a while to to load up the information, but I hope it's available in a bit. Okay. Okay. So this model has a set of boreholes and also has a seismic cross section. You can view it here. You can view the seismic here. You can view the boreholes and how they were used to adjust the different surfaces on the on the cross sections. This model is built from those cross sections that you that you see there. We can, for example, change the Change uh, this S1, the seismic one cross section, and put the default cross sections to see, to view the the cross sections that, that the model is built from, okay, and how uh, the information is there, okay. Let's continue. Okay, so uh, the model takes a cross section and guarantees that the interpolation algorithm passes exactly through them. It helps you to interpret by uh, uh, with generated interpolated cross sections and with very very simple operations uh, to edit those cross sections. That means that uh, everything will be uh, that 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 means that when you have to to make some changes, uh, the the changes will be very very easy to make. Okay. Okay. So this is. A basic uh, geology model. This is uh, from Tauramena. It's a, it's a region in uh, eastern Colombia. This is uh, so you can see here, for example, all the cross sections, and you can see uh, this interpolated cross section that goes all through those cross sections. Okay, so. Uh, what you can see is that it respects all the contacts, it respects all the interpolated faults, and all the and like that, it generates a very uh, impressive solid that follows all your constraints exactly. Okay. Okay. Uh, the kinds of visualizations that you can use are uh, visualizations of uh, block diagrams, also visualizations of 3D uh, volumes. You also have visualizations of uh, your interpolated fault. Uh, finally, you can visualize your boreholes. You can visualize also the XF uh, 3D files, uh, either as either lines or volumes. Okay, this is another uh, another geological model. As you can see, it's rather complex volcanic chamber okay it's a uh, it's from a volcano in colombia in the southern part of colombia but i'm going to show you that even this very complex uh, object is made from a few cross sections okay from a few cross sections and that it respects them completely and fully okay 
Okay, so you can create presentations and add visualizations in 3D and 2D. You can share visualizations, map, cross sections in other uh, websites. And you can visualize everything in virtual reality. This is uh, a copper mine that uh, in the Duluth complex in the United States. Uh, we did a webinar with this uh, geological model last year. Well, actually, it was a bit before that. Okay, so uh, this model has a huge set of boreholes and a huge set of uh, and a lot of information. Okay, so let's see it in full screen. Let's see how uh, well how you can. how all those boreholes relate to the different geological units which have different uh, mineralizations. We can click in one of the boreholes and it will bring us like the ID, the geological unit, etc. Okay. So let's go to the study area, area that we use to uh, uh, create this, this demonstration. So the area is called, um, it's Colombita, Boyacá. It's actually in Colombia. It's a small region of uh, of the eastern eastern part of of, of Colombia. And this is uh, well, this is very important uh, hydro hydrogeologically for for all the uh, for many cities that are around it uh, in two, in in Boyacá and also in Bogota, which are very important cities for Colombia. Okay. Basically, we created the, the model from a set of uh, structural cross sections. Okay, so let's see here. Um, okay, so let's hide the cross sections, which are uh, which are not part of interpolation and let's leave the cross sections which are part of interpolation okay and we can see how the model is interpreted from them great okay you have the cross section editor here well this is the cross section visualizer actually the editor has a few tools that you can use to to edit the cross sections, of course, but this has a uh, well, most of the thing the, the editor has. You can, for example, exaggerate the coordinates uh, to view to view the coordinates above the sea level a bit higher. So if you have a very very flat, uh, well, very very yeah, uh, uh, flat cross section with a small uh, distance, which is very very long, then then you could use this to exaggerate it and to better interpret the cross section. Okay, uh, it has measures, it has a grid, etc. Okay, this is uh, our actual black model. Our actual block model is rather it's rather complex, but we are going to model in this in a small area that I'm going to show you right now. Well, this is a a, a demonstration of how block uh, diagrams, faults, and geological units visualizations work. So, as you see, uh, everything. Uh, as you see, block diagrams pass uh, perfectly through cross sections, and also uh, geological uh, and, and all geological units then are interpolated as such. And also, you have uh, the faults, which are also perfectly aligned with all the the cross sections, of course. Okay. Okay. So after you have. A geological model ready. You can export directly to Modflow, Pflow. Uh, use different kinds of meshes, follow units, boreholes, and others. So you have this this model with all the geological units. You can convert it to Modflow, for example, 
and uh, start uh, simulating and start calculating paths and start uh, calculating inverse problems. You can all, and now you can also export to Pflow, which is uh, the reason of this webinar. So you can load the polygonal domain, reverse walls, uh, that I said. You can set the size of the triangles of the mesh and the triangles around the reverse and well. You can set the influence radio around reverse and well. We're going to see that in a bit. And you can define the number of layers that uh, you can that you want to, to to use, for example, for your model. You can you need also to set the uh, hydraulic parameters, Kx, uh, uh, honey sulfur P, and Kc. We left them like this uh, because these these are the parameters usually used by hydrogeologists, uh, in, and they are the parameters that I use by Modflow and other platforms to to define. And you can choose the the algorithm. Uh, you can choose simple, uh, the simple algorithm or the adaptive algorithm, which uh, depending on on, the, on on what you choose will have different consequences in your model and your and plus in, in how to, uh, to follow units, but also in how to in how convergence is achieved. Okay. And after you set all that, uh, GeoModeler creates the model in the web, and you can download the .fam .fim file and load it into Fflow. So uh, let's see. So uh, for this model, you have we had uh, the rivers, a few boreholes. These are not actually uh, wells uh, of the model. They they work created by us to, uh, well, to, to exemplify, uh, exemplify our algorithm, but they are not actual boreholes, okay? But uh, the rivers, yeah, they are actual rivers, okay? So, and also the polygonal domain will allow us to subset uh, the model uh, to the parts that we want to, and not to the entire, the entire area of the of the square which is something that is necessary for example for modflow or for other software uh, but not for feeflow which uh, can have uh, a small subset of the area rather easily okay okay so uh, we can see here the visualization of the domain and the four holes in geomodel okay okay let's see it big Okay, so you can see here the power holes and you can see here the domain a bit transparent. We can actually hide the, the cross-sectional view. So we can see only the bore holes here. They are black because they don't have any, any information. We just needed the bore holes as such put on the platform, okay? And you have the simple versus uh, adaptive algorithm here. Okay, so as you can see here, uh, the simple algorithm just uh, divides in in, in cells uh, the, dom the the domain vertically. While the like, but it also has a parameter that helps you, for example, to add more layers to the top, so that so that you can have a better uh, well, better representation of the top. However, uh, yeah, what it, what it does is that it creates a very squared, uh, a squared domain here. Okay, and okay, we can see better the algorithm, uh, the result of the algorithm here. Okay, so this is uh, this is uh, the simple algorithm. As you can see, there are more layers at the top if you want to. To, to do that, okay? Uh, but the domain is discretized very squarely, okay? So we have here the adaptive algorithm. The adaptive algorithm does much better in terms of following the different uh, units, as you can see here. They are followed perfectly. They are followed perfectly. However, you cannot, uh, you cannot uh, control the number of layers that are going to be on top because what it does is that it it helps to fit all the the layers in a way that that it saves the most uh, the most of the layers 
so that you have a, a smaller uh, FAM file. Okay. This is then the the definition of the influence radius. Okay. So you can have a discretization of the boreholes specifically or or the rivers specifically. You can put a, a discretization there and and that discretization will be uh, will be used by a geomodeler to uh, to start to build the uh, uh, discretizations toward the outside okay but you can also select an influence radius what is the influence radius is the radius in which uh, the the triangles will become normal again okay so uh, this is the normal size of the triangles and the influence radius is the a, a radius in which uh, the target triangle size will be a, a normal triangle size okay so as you see here if uh, you can you can set a, a large influence radius then you you'll have a smaller triangles for a large radius until it becomes uh, more normal it will help with the numerical stabilities but uh, it will actually help with the numerical stabilities but it also can create meshes that are too big so if you have put a smaller radius uh, you can have uh, measures that are uh, smaller uh, and also that have uh, very small elements at the uh, at the very near to the to the to the important features the important rivers or to the important boreholes but this but uh, yeah we'll have a mesh with with less elements okay and so it depends on what you're seeing with your model with your model this is really important for example because uh, the numerical solution of uh, the problem can be improved greatly for example uh, around uh, a borehole around the borehole the numerical solution uh, the numerical solution needs the, a, a lot of discretization but that is not uh, specifically required in a, a, anywhere just just around the boreholes that you are going to make okay so uh, so okay so the boreholes that you need are boreholes uh, loaded to the platform okay so uh, so we'll see in a bit how to load them to the platform and the rivers are uh, vector files of lines uh, you, of course, you can you can use uh, any any lines that you have. You can use uh, a false a false lines, but of course you uh, of course you would like uh, them to be rivers. And uh, one thing that that you would want to make sure is that the rivers shape file that you have you have corrected it in in RGs and and you are sure that that the points are touching. Uh, points uh, in, in all the lines. So for example, if if you have a bifurcation of a river, then there is a node there that is perfectly uh, good. And also that the angles are a bit uh, big uh, because uh, uh, geomodeler can only go so far to, to make your mesh with good angles. But if you have uh, as input a very, very horrible angle, then as output, you will have a very, very horrible angle too. So, so please uh, make sure of that. And this is uh, the end of our presentation. But now we're going to we're going to our model. Okay. So as I told you, this is the articles page of our geological model. To navigate our model, uh, we can uh, view here the the study button. And we can view here that we can go directly to visualizations, to the files repository, to the article, or to the study page. We go to the study page where we see all the model with all the cross sections. We can see the tab with the model settings. It will tell us, for example, the bounding box, the EPSG code, which is the coordinate system of our model, uh, the distance unit. The distance unit come with the EPSG code. Okay, they are not asked during the creation of the model. And currently, which is the bottom that we use? The bottom is uh, the lowest point of all the cross sections. So that is used uh, by the model, for example, to export or to anything. 
the other well the, the top will be the topography but the topography of course is different at different points of the of the model okay here you can have the model versions and these are uh, advanced parameters uh, to create models and to make them uh, more accurate uh, against different scenarios okay and the study settings uh, you can actually add people here to help you to model to help you to create a model so you can have as many collaborators as you want in any of our plans okay and you can set permissions for them and you can set them as viewers uh, or as any given permission that you want to to give them okay to create the model as i told you we have to do cross sections cross sections use the geological editor the geological editor is a really really simple uh, very easy to use tool and has uh, several sets of palping tools for example if, if we want to create a layer below this that is uh, has a fixed thickness of 100 meters well that's good 50 just to save okay we put here this and we click the this divide the polygon and then Let's go and then let's go. Okay. Oh, okay. And then we can see that it follows the. It always guarantees that it's it's near the 50 meters, and we can close this. We can close this here. Oh, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't select uh, an end node. So it's a very very simple tool to uh, to add it to your cross sections. You have very simple operations of divide, join. If I divide a unit in two, well, join merges them. The full separation are equally simple. The add and all to border is equally well. There are the nodes operations help both operations, and you also have a lot of helpers, uh, raster file for raster files, image files, vector files, boreholes, etc., that can help you to model faster and model better. Okay. So if you want to see all this, all you have to do is click here in pages and go to documentation. Open the documentation and you will have a set of videos that will help you to understand your modeler step by step by step. Okay. Step by step by step. This is from uh, this is how to use boreholes, for example, yeah, how to write articles, etc. And also another source of information are our past webinars. So uh, you can go to blog that geomodeler.com go to webinars and you will find our past webinars and they will help you to uh, have uh, to learn more about the geological models okay okay so as I told you we need it mm. we needed the boreholes and we also needed the uh, the rivers and the and the area okay so uh the area is actually a shape file you can see uh, you have to zip the the file to uh, be able to use it but you can see here that we have a domain.shhp file well the the file con has to contain all the information of the shape file for example it has to contain a projection it has to contain uh it has to contain, of course, the .shp, the .pbf, etc. All the all the files that come with the RGS shape should be here. Okay, so this domain file has a single polygon, and this polygon will be the domain that we are going to cut. And the rivers are several line strings, 72 line strings that we can use to uh, to build our rivers. Okay. And we also have uh, the boreholes. How to create a borehole dataset? You create a new data set. 
to write the name for the data set. Create the boreholes data set, uh, selecting borehole.xls, and you select the color. Okay, you just select which is going to be the X, and well, for example, the X is the east, and you select X. You select the north, you select X, uh, Y, I'm sorry, you select the call elevation. For example, and you select C, and you also need an ID, so you select this and put it as ID. You can write any name. You can also add any other information here, and you can change uh, the name of this. Okay, and you can rename it here and view it later. Okay, you need a uh, a survey. The survey is as any survey. Uh, it needs a distance, the passimuth, and also ID. All ideas, of course, ID. Distancia is distance in Spanish. Azimuth is actually azimuth. Deep is actually deep. Oh, I'm sorry, no. This time, deep is not deep, deep is deep down. Okay. And you click here. To rename it a tip. Okay, and finally you select. Uh, okay, why did I do this? Because uh, GeoModeler takes, for example, that 90 degrees uh, deep is 90 degrees down, not uh, not 90 degrees up. There are many platforms that use uh, the other convention, but well, I think it's flawed anyway. I think that the 90 degrees should mean 90 degrees down. Okay. Okay, finally, you select an interval, of course, ID. Of course, from, of course, to, and you can select rock type as unit, for example. And you click submit. And in a few seconds, you will have your borehole data set created. Okay, well, you can see how it went. Oops, we had a few bits of, uh, of problems here, but okay. At the end, we only loaded se se seven portholes. Okay, but you can see here if, if, if you have any errors. Anyway, it will load whatever finds correctly probably because because after the seven the the axle went down so it just avoided the the rows of course but there is no problem with that okay so okay we're done with this you can go to the visualizations page here or we can go here but the page that we are eager to go to is actually the exports page, of course. So the exports page has the export to pod flow and export to mod, uh, export to fee flow and export to mod flow uh, tabs. So you can export to mod flow as, uh, as you have seen in one of our previous webinars. You can use adaptive grid and simple grid as in, as I showed you in Flow, etc. It's uh, it's in another webinar. So we're going to click export to Flow. Uh, a few months back, we had uh, an interface to uh, export as a structured uh, a structured file. So uh, a structure is basically the, the the same as the Modflow export. It's just uh, a squared prisms that a squared prisms that fill the entire area so it's just a, a mod flow export just to use in people 
But right now, what we are going to use is the prismatic mesh, which has a lot more of advantages. Okay, so we're going to write the name of of, of, of what we want to export. So let's see. Uh, so export, and we're going to write the units data. Okay, so we will have to fill hydraulic horizontal hydraulic conductivity. So one. Uh, horizontal anisotropy. So this is uh, how much uh, the uh, the anisotropy in the the conductivity in the x direction is the conductivity in the in the y direction. So for example, if you if we put zero point one, then it will say that it's a ten percent uh, in the in the y direction, of of course. But we are going to leave this as one. And the vertical hydraulic conductivity, hydrogeologists always, well, many times use uh, a 10 percent of the hydro of the hydraulic conductivity in the x direction. Okay, so uh, there are a lot of units here, 14 actually. Uh, so we would have to fill all of them, but yeah, we we only have to do this the first time. Because we have here a uh, paste or a uh, load data from uh, the a previous save it, uh, save it export. So what we do here is that we go and do paste. OK, and we already have a few conductivities uh, here. Well, we created this unit that it, it was not in there. In the in the previous in the previous export, uh, we created by loading uh, the the rock the the boreholes previously, but we are going to give it uh, I don't know 20, 20, 20 here, okay. And here we can select the algorithm that we are going to use. So we can use a simple grid or adaptive grid. We already saw what, what we could do with that. And so the simple grid, we select the number of layers and the triangle size. Triangle size is mandatory, but the number of layers is default to 100. So we're going to pick 50. And we uh, enter the initial layer, layer thickness. If we don't enter this parameter, then it will not have an initial layer, layer thickness. But if we enter it, uh, then the initial light layer thickness uh, will be uh, will be the the thickness of the first layer of the progression, okay, and and it will try to to create fifty layers with initial with that initial layer thickness with a with an arithmetic progression. It's a very very simple formula and it's very very simple to to control. As what you need is actually the the thickness of the initial layer, of course, right? Okay, so the adaptive grid is the second kind of grid. In this, we have different parameters. For example, we all we have a maximum angle, which is uh, so. Okay, let's see. Let's see a bit uh, again. Again, the the articles and I'm going to explain you the the angle with the uh... oops I'm sorry that's not it <laughs> okay Here, let's go to the adaptive. Okay, so as you see here, uh, to to be able to fit the different layers without changing, without, with having well a more um, a regular way to create the, the model, well it has to to go and go down in an angle, yeah, uh, so that it fits the the next layer. So what the 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 maximum what the maximum angle does is that it says okay this this angle uh, some angles are really too much uh, for, and you need to create a new, 
a new layer, a new layer uh, to be able to fit that angle, and you cannot uh, simply uh, and, and you cannot simply go uh, that angle because if it wasn't for that angle, then what we would have is probably uh, a layer that 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 though goes like a like a like a cardio uh, like a electrocardiogram. So yeah, that's that's actually not what we want. We want something more smooth even if it takes a bit more layers okay so this maximum angle and the triangle size also is mandatory and the minimum layer thickness is uh is a parameter that serves for uh for controlling numerical uh, precision and numerical stability so sometimes uh, this is this way of uh, adapting layers generates layers which are too, too thin, and uh, so the, this minimal layer thickness actually prevents those uh, those layers to exist uh, by putting a minimum, a bare minimum. Like you cannot have a layer that is uh, thinner than this. It's uh, by default it's one, but you can set it up in the parameter you want. You might want to set it up ten or something like that. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So. So let's select a polygon as the area to model. So we already had seen that we uploaded this data.zip and that we have the domain here. We don't have to, to click anywhere else. We also are going to select a river. So data, rivers correct. Okay. And we're going to uh, select the label for the rivers so that uh, this label is important for selections. So, so uh, well, as we are not going to have a uh, list Camilo, we are not going to be able to view uh, a lot of selections. Uh, we're probably uh, going to, to send you afterwards a bit about those, but you can use selections in Fiflow to apply uh, boundary conditions. So for example, you would need to apply a boundary condition of river type to rivers, of course, and different names of the river, while different parts of the river would need different uh, boundary conditions. So if you have a, a very big river, you would need a, a really different boundary condition for it, okay? So you select the name, you select the target at size of the river. So as we saw previously, uh, as we saw previously, this is going to be the the edge size here. So so as I said, Geomodeler will try to smooth it according to the next parameter, which is the influence radius of the river. Okay, and finally, you will select the boreholes which will also have two parameters, the well edge sizes. So uh, around the, the edge, it will, uh, around the, the well, around the borehole, you will see, uh, you will see, you will set the size of, the, of those edges. And of course the influence radius, which will help you to, to make it smoother for longer, for, for, for a bigger area, of course. And finally, you can click submit, okay? Uh, okay, so I'm going to click submit. Okay, I cannot use this name. Oh, this is actually because of a mod flow problem that, that does not load uh, files with the spaces, but but it shouldn't be in Fiflow, of course. <laughs> uh, so when we do this, here, it appears that the model is being processed. Actually, you can see this not only here, but you can see it here in our files repository. It will be here for you to use. Okay, and of course, in any files repository that you have. Okay, let's go back to the exports page. Oh, here's the chat. So. Anytime you have a problem, 
please ask us. We are there to help you. We are really, 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 really eager to hear from you, to hear recommendations, to hear absolutely anything you have to say to us, OK? So don't be shy and talk to us. OK, let's go to the exports page again. And it will take a few seconds uh, to download. However, we already have loaded, the, loaded this uh, for you to uh, view it. OK, to view it. And you can see here the result in PFLOW. I'm really, really, really sorry. We had uh, prepared, uh, we have prepared a webinar with uh, Luis Camilo, but he, as he's isn't not available, we aren't going to be able to see how wonderful PFLOW uh, is and how it's and how uh, it's capable of uh, well of showing all the capability, all the things that that we that we exported to this model. But we can. For example, view that geomodel are exported, selections as units. So you can see here that you can select all uh, the, the units. Selections as rivers. So you can see here that the rivers are selected whenever we click. And also selections are wells. This is a 3D selection. I'm not really familiar with Tiflo, so I don't ha I don't know how to hide that. But uh, yeah, the the selection would go like down the whole. As this is a, a structure file anyway, a prismatic structure with layer, uh, all your portholes will have to be vertical to be able to use them with GeoModeler and with the export to Tiflo tool. Okay, so that's a really 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 important thing. Uh, that I didn't mention, that we did not mention uh, previously in our presentations. Okay, but yeah, you will. If if we could see, we we would see nodes in every layer that you can apply boundary conditions to those nodes to uh, apply the right boundary conditions to your borehole where you're extracting water. Okay, so thank you, thank you so much for coming to our webinar. And do you have any questions you want to, to make to us? Uh, do you have any questions you want to, to make? Any questions at all? OK, you can, you can do uh, questions in the chat, or you can talk to us later. We are really, really, really happy to have had you in this our webinar. Uh, I hope that you have uh, liked it, uh, the new interfaces that we have for, for Pflow. And we are really here happy to help you with all, the, all what you need in Chica Modeler. So see you next time, and have a great weekend. Bye-bye.